Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and I've been getting questions a lot about beginner supplies. What beginner supplies should you start out with? And I have touched on this in the past, but I feel like my opinions have changed about some things. So I'm going to address it in this video and give you some options and suggestions of things you can purchase as a beginner. So let's jump right in and talk about supplies. Okay, so today we are talking about supplies and everything beginner. I have done a couple videos on supplies for beginners before, but a couple of things have changed. My opinions have changed. Um, I've discovered some new products that will hopefully be a bit more interesting to you. And I wanna give you less suggestions to help not overwhelm you with the amount of different products there are out there. So I'm gonna give you some of my tried and true favorite supplies that don't completely break the bank for beginners. Now, I will always say, if you wanna start off with like the cheapest like kids palette and dollar store brushes, I am all for that. That is how I started. When I first picked up watercolor, that is what I started with. Honestly, dollar store brushes and a cheap artist loft palette from Michaels that was like $7.99. It was like those cakey little pans and I fell in love with watercolor and then I upgraded. So if you wanna start off just to see if you kind of like watercolor, do that 100%. But if you want some suggestions for an upgrade in supplies, but not completely professional supplies, I've got you. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start with is paint. And now I have always said that Winsor Newton Cotman paints are my absolute favorite. This is what I started off with after I used that cheap Artist Loft palette. I started off with these Winsor Newton Cotman tubes. These are student grade watercolor paints. They are great quality. I love them. Um, and the reason why I started off with these is because I got them at a workshop. I got five tubes at a workshop and honestly, that's all I needed for a while. So I started off with these small tubes um, and I purchased them separately. Later on, I got bigger ones because I was gonna teach a workshop and then COVID hit. But I got a bunch of these smaller ones and this is how I started. So with watercolor tubes, the one thing you need with tubes is a palette. So I have this palette that I got off Amazon um, I think it was $10. Now, I do have a link to a palette, but it may not be the same. Links are always changing on Amazon um, and products are always changing. So basically, it's just a cheap <laughs> plastic palette. These ones have my professional watercolors in it, but I, used, I started off with a slightly smaller plastic palette like this that was super cheap that I put my Cotman colors in. And the way I use tube paints is that I squeeze the tubes into my palette and I let them dry overnight. So these are all dry. I find as beginners, when you're using tubes that are dry, you tend to use less paint as opposed to using them fresh straight out of the tube. Because watercolor is such a different medium than acrylics and things that we're most familiar with, um, we don't need as much paint as you think. So you don't need to take globs of paint when painting with watercolor. Essentially, you wanna use the property of water to make it do its thing. So using them dry, I find, works the best for beginners. And even myself, this is how I use them. The only thing you need to do once you are ready to paint, these are all dry, you can take like a little spray bottle that I got at the dollar store and spray them all down and that activates your paints. Or you can even just take your brush, dip it in your water and then swish around your paint and you reactivated your paints. It's as simple as that. That is how I use tubes. Um, and these are what I first started out with. So when I was first beginning, I had to purchase the tubes separately. Recently, they have started creating sets of tubes, which I have linked in the description below. So they have sets of Cotman tubes of like 12 or 10 different tubes um, of colors. So it takes kind of the guessing out of what colors to start with. But if you do wanna purchase them separately, maybe you only want five or you're only in the budget, or you only have a budget for you know a couple of them, I do have, again, in the description, my top five paints that I would start out with, the paint colors, and then my next five that I would purchase. But again, the sets of the tubes are a really great option because it just takes the guessing out of what colors you need to buy. So these were always my go-to for beginners. Um, love them. 
And starting off with a limited palette of only five or 10 colors um, is really great because it forces you to mix new colors, which is a really helpful skill to have in watercolor. So if this seems too overwhelming to you, I will say that pan sets are a great option. And I am going to give you my favorite pan set, which is perfect for beginners. This is the Mia Lang palette. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, they also went by Pretty Excellent. I think they're affiliated with Paul Rubens, but this palette specifically is really great. It comes with 48 colors. So this one, I also linked this one below and there's one that has only 36 colors, which is also a great option. The 48 one has all these metallic colors if you're into metallic colors. I personally am not really into metallic colors, so I would be perfectly fine with the 38 set. Um, but for student grade watercolors, these are great quality. And again, having a set palette takes the guessing out of what colors you should purchase as well as having to purchase a separate palette to put your watercolors in. So if this seems less intimidating to you, I would definitely go with this palette. Now I do want to warn you that not all pan palettes are made equally. I have done a comparison video on a couple paint palettes that were all around the same price range, comparing this to two other ones and the other two did not compare. So make sure you read reviews before you purchase a watercolor palette because you might get something that's really chalky and just doesn't move the way you want it to. This brand I'm really happy with, Paul Rubens I'm really happy with. For the price, I feel like this is your best bet. So for beginners, depending on which way you wanna go, if you wanna go with tubes and develop your collection that way, you can do the Cotman colors or you can do the paint palette, the May Along or the Pretty Excellent palette. I think they're the same. The one thing I will say about the tubes is that besides just being able to customize your palette with the colors that you want, it's also a lot easier to find refills. When I'm done one of these pans, I won't really have an option to buy a new one. So I could buy a tube and then fill the little area like that, um, but I wouldn't wanna have to buy a whole new palette. So I've never finished a pan palette, so I don't know um, if that's an issue for a lot of people who use watercolor pans, but that's kind of what drew me to the tubes as well, is being able to find the refills super easily. So that is what I'm gonna tell you about paint. Okay, so let's move on to paper. Paper, I will have to say, is one of the most important parts of watercolor. Not only are you gonna need paper that is thick enough to withhold the water, the perfect texture of paper really makes a difference in your paintings. If you have cheap watercolor paper that's like a cellulose type of paper, you're not gonna be as happy with your results. I will say that now. Um, however, that means you may have to spend a bit more than you're willing to to get good quality paper. Now, if you wanna start off with one of these like Canson XL watercolor pads that you can get at Michael's, I'm all for that. This is what I started out with. I have like five or six of these and I went through all of them. It is not the best quality paper, but it will do the trick when you are learning brush strokes and mixing colors and all of that. I didn't find that the paper quality hindered my love for watercolor or frustrated me too much because I didn't know the difference. Um, but this is what I started out with. This is not beginning work. This was like, maybe a year into learning watercolor. It's pretty light. Um, so this is not beginner, beginner work. But yeah, so I use these for a very, very long time. Do I recommend them? Not necessarily. I would rather go for better quality paper. There are some better options out there, but if this is what you have access to, this is totally fine. Okay, so now let's get to some of my recommendations. I'm gonna start off with a Canadian company um, from Dana Fox. She is from Wonder Forest. That's her Instagram and her YouTube. She also has books. She's Canadian, love it. And she has come out with paper. She has these little mini sketchbooks and she has these pads of paper. So it's pretty decent watercolor paper. It says cold pressed cotton, which is great. Again, cotton paper is gonna give you the best results in my opinion, but I'm gonna give you a couple tips on what to look for when you're looking for paper as a beginner, especially if some of my suggestions you don't have in the region where you live, I'm gonna show you what to look for. 
Number one, you want to find paper that will withhold water and is thick enough. 140 pounds or 300 GSM means the paper weight. It is nice and thick. You know that it's going to withhold the water really, really well. That is super important. You don't really want anything that's a little bit less. However, my Etcher sketchbooks with the white cover, they are a little bit less, but the paper quality is really good, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to tell you, look for 140 pounds or 300 GSM. Number two, you want to look for something that is cold pressed. There are a few different types of paper. You're going to hear about cold pressed, hot pressed, and rough paper. That is talking about the texture of the paper. Cold pressed has a bit more texture to it and I find it holds the water and the paint really, really well. Hot pressed is very, very smooth. And in my opinion, I find that the paint and the water sit on top a bit more. It's a little bit better for illustration in some senses. I do have a video comparing the two, but I have always found my best work is on cold pressed paper. And then rough paper is just a lot more textured. I don't necessarily suggest that for beginners. I will say go with cold pressed watercolor paper. And then lastly, I like to work in either pads like this. So this is a pad where you can remove the sheets or a sketchbook. You're gonna find some paper that is a block. Now this is some Paul Rubens 100% cotton paper, which I also suggest. I just couldn't find it um, on Amazon for the link. It's hard to find at times, but if you can find it, it's pretty good. Um, but some papers will come in a block and they'll be glued all around the edges with a little opening. And you can just take like, I even take my ruler and I just put it in there and I cut it out. Um, but this just helps the paper stay flat when you are working on it. And then once it's dried, you can remove it and the paper doesn't warp as much. Depending on the brand of paper, blocks can be a little bit more expensive. When I get into talking about Arches watercolor paper, I'm going to be recommending the pads because the blocks are super pricey and insane. But those are the different types. You can either work in a sketchbook or on loose paper pads and then take them out easily. I've really gravitated to working in sketchbooks lately just because I like having my work all in one place. And yeah, that's about it. So the Wonder Forest brand is one I definitely recommend. The links for that are down in the description. And then another little sketchbook that I do recommend, which is uh, fairly cheap, is the Paul Rubens Hot Pressed Sketchbook. Now I said, go for cold pressed. And I always stand by that. But this hot press paper, it's smooth, but it holds the water really nicely. Something that I haven't experienced with other hot pressed um, papers. So this one, I actually don't mind. It is hot pressed, but it, it's actually really nice to work on. And it's perfect for gouache and watercolor. This I believe I got for $20 and I really like this. This may be a good option for beginners as well. And then lastly, my absolute favorite paper, Arches watercolor paper. Now, depending again where you live in the world, it's going to vary on price. In Canada, I believe... In Canada, in different areas, I can get a pad of 12 sheets for $18.99. I think on Amazon it was like $30 or $40. I think the U.S., you can find it. I think the link right now is like $16.99, but then other links <laughs> or other places, it's $40. It really depends. Shop around and see where you can find it. This is my all-time, hands-down favorite watercolor paper, um, especially for work that I'm producing to sell or scan. So this to me is the highest quality. Unfortunately, I don't think it's completely vegan. So if that is something that matters to you, you might wanna look into different vegan papers. I can't really give you a list cause I don't really know, but I know some people had issues with this one for that reason, but I still love this paper. And then quickly, I'm just gonna mention my Etcher sketchbooks because this is what you're gonna see me working in in almost every tutorial, just because I like having my work all in one place. It is a lot more pricey. I don't necessarily recommend it for beginners who are on a budget because like I said, it is pretty pricey, but it is wonderful paper. Um, I love this for everything. It is not 140 pounds, I believe it's, yeah, this one is 230 GSM opposed to 300 GSM. It's 100% cotton cold press and you can use both sides for painting. So while this one might be a bit more expensive, I really love it 
and feel like it's worth it in a lot of senses because you can use both sides of the paper. You can paint on this side and this side, which with some watercolor papers, even like arches, you're not gonna get your best work on the back of the paper. One, one side is definitely a lot more textured than the other. Okay, so that's it. That's all about paper. And then lastly, brushes. Brushes are tricky because I feel they are personal to people and I haven't tried every brush out there. A lot of the brushes I have are really good quality. My go-to brushes are my collaboration brushes that I did with Craftimo. I would not necessarily say beginners should get this because they are on the pricier side, but if this is something you love, it is good to invest in good brushes. This is my set that I did with Craftimo. These are my four go-to sizes I use for absolutely everything and I love them. But if you're on a budget, they may not be right for you. So again, like I said, this is a bit tricky because prices vary everywhere you are. The brushes I started off with are Princeton Snap Brushes. And I got these at my local art store in Toronto. It was a Curry's art store and they don't have many stores everywhere. But when I got them, they were a really good price. Unfortunately, the Amazon links that I supplied in the description I would not say are the best price. They are really great brushes, but I don't know if they are worth the price they are going for on Amazon. If you can, look at your local art stores. I know in the US, they have them at dickblick.com, um, which for like an amazing price. So if you can get them there, I would highly suggest it. They're really great brushes, especially for beginners. I use them forever until I created these ones. But yeah, it all depends on the price. But like I said at the beginning, I started with dollar store brushes. Were they the greatest? No. Could I have used better ones? Heck yes. <laughs> but there are also tons of options of different brushes that I haven't personally tried, so I can't recommend them. But again, just look at reviews and see if any of them jump out at you. So that's about it. Those are the supplies that you're going to need for watercolor. The other little things are water jars <laughs> and paper towel. That is what you're gonna need. You need paint, paper, brushes, water, and paper towel to blot your brush and for a couple other techniques. That's all you need to get started. I did mean to make this simple. I hope it was. I hope I gave you some good suggestions. Please, if you have any questions, comment below or contact me through Instagram or Facebook. It's a lot better to get a hold of me there so we can talk personally and I can give you some suggestions. But otherwise, I hope that was informative and I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Patreon and TikTok for even more. <laughs> have a great day, guys. I gotta think of a different outro for this part. That's a lot. Have a great day, guys. Bye.